This is 2013's Knights of Badassdom. It's what they called me and my friends in college. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up to a narrator who tells us about a magical book that was meant to summon angels, but it ended up summoning demons through song instead. The book has been lost for centuries, until now that is. Cultists gather in the woods to perform a sacrifice, but soon, Ronnie pops up and tells Eric that his sacrifice didn't succeed. What the LARPers don't know is that the redneck paintballers are waiting for them in the tree line to pelt them. The LARPers make fun of Eric for his weak spell, and he gets ready to pull out a spellbook when they get ambushed by the paintballers. The LARPers run for cover, and they make it to Eric's van. It turns out that Eric left the book behind though, and the rednecks try to tear it. No matter how hard he tries, he can't even get it open. Suddenly, it opens itself and latches onto the main redneck's face. After it gets ripped off, it disappears, but it leaves a tattoo of the pages on his face. Honestly, I could imagine a thousand worse things to have tattooed on your face. This actually kind of looks cool. As they're getting away, Eric realizes that he must have left the book behind, and he starts freaking out. Just then, the book appears in the back, and Hung shows it to Eric. Hung swears that they'll be back to get their revenge on the rednecks, but for now, they retreat. Back in town, Joe is singing the new death metal song in the garage that he works at, and his girlfriend, Beth, sighs at the noise while she gets herself fixed up in the bathroom. Then Joe's boss comes out to tell him to turn off the music, and Joe tries to explain that the song is a love song to Beth. His boss doesn't get it, but his co-workers think it has a sick sound. Joe heads inside to tell Beth that they should go somewhere nice for dinner tonight, and he hints that he has something special to ask her. Beth isn't looking forward to that, and she explains that she needs to concentrate on her career before thinking about anything big like that. Somehow, her telling him that she doesn't want him to propose turns straight up into breaking up. At the house, Eric and Hung are packing up the van for their big LARP tournament, and Joe runs over Hung's mace as he rushes inside. As Joe walks through the house, we can see what Beth was talking about, but it's honestly kinda cool. Low-key, this castle house is a dream pad that I never knew I needed. Why don't I have this? And the rooms are huge, too. As soon as Eric and Hung hear that Joe is playing a power ballad on his guitar, they know something's wrong. Immediately, they call that Beth dumped him. Hung tries to tell him that they hadn't been right for each other in a long time, but Joe starts to think that she might be right about him needing to change some things. After seeing Joe how he is, Hung tells Eric that they can't leave him like this. Hung puts his healing hands on Joe, and after a moment, he knows exactly what he needs. A sativa, of course. Joe tries to say that he quit smoking, but Eric points out that the only reason he stopped was because of Beth. After some motivation, Joe takes huge hits off the bomb, and he winds up passing out. In his dream, he remembers Beth holding him in bed, but when he wakes up, he's back in the van. Could you imagine waking up from a smoke session and seeing yourself transported to a LARP tournament? It'd be partially terrifying, but also partially a dream come true. Joe has the right questions, though. How did they get him dressed? Nearby, the leaders of the opposite armies converse about the upcoming battle, and Joe calls for Eric and Hung. They arrive in costume, and they explain that they're at the Kingdom of Eliphaz, aka the parking lot. Joe tries to leave, but Eric tells him that this is exactly what he needs. Also, I don't know if you know the rules of LARPing, but everyone's in character the entire time. Eric and Hunger over there saying needs and old English words, but I promise it I won't be doing that. Elsewhere, Ronnie tells his helpers their jobs, and he takes them on a tour of the grounds that'll be used for their adventure. Ronnie explains that as the Game Master, he'll be overwatching everything, but his attention is pulled away when he spots Gwen and Gunther. He tries to talk to Gwen about being his assistant head game master, but when he puts a hand on her, Gunther puts him back in his place. Back in the parking lot, Joe finds Hung's secret stash of steel weapons, and he thought that they only used foam weapons. Eric explains that certain clients pay top dollar for real weapons, but foam is used for the actual LARP. Joe's had enough of the games, but Eric reminds him that he used to play D&D when he wasn't such a buzzkill. Joe decides to join in on the festivities, and Eric and Hung celebrate. Meanwhile, Ronnie hands out costumes for the monsters in the woods as Eric approaches. Eric tells Ronnie that Joe's here, and Ronnie begrudgingly agrees to let him participate. Apparently, Joe gave Ronnie's palette and syphilis back when they used to play D&D together. His monster manual is still stucketh together. Back in the parking lot, Hung eats an entire bag of shrooms and gives Joe a lesson on points. Joe gets distracted by Gwen who stops to watch, and Hung gives him a quick lesson on why you should always watch your opponent. Soon Eric arrives, and he tells him that they have to do an animation spell to allow Joe to play. They head into the forest, and Eric starts reading from the spell book while Hung sets off some smoke bombs. Suddenly, Joe starts seeing things in the smoke, and he sees a demon take the form of Beth. When Eric finishes the spell, he notices a picture of Beth fell out of Joe's pocket, and Hung snatches it up. He then eats the picture. Looks like the shrooms are starting to take effect. Hung's about to have a great weekend. As they leave the area, Hung releases one more smoke bomb, and the deformed Beth comes out of the woods. On the way back, Eric introduces everyone, and Joe meets Lando, Gunther, and Gwen. Suddenly, they're attacked by demon apes, and Joe gets a taste of what's in store for him. Meanwhile, one of the actors encounters Demon Beth, and she gives him a time that he won't soon forget. He won't be playing anymore. 
After the group gets rid of all the demon apes, Lando comes up with the idea of splitting up to cover more ground, and Eric sends Joe to the parking lot to get an amulet he forgot. Gwen agrees to accompany him, and Gunther stays with Eric. As the sun sets, a nearby elf is looking for the rest of his group, but he runs into Demon Beth instead. He thinks that she's part of the vampire LARPers, but when he thinks she's coming on to him, he informs her that she's barking up the wrong tree. So Demon Beth rips his heart out, just like an ex. Fantastic symbolism. As Gwen and Joe make their way to the parking lot, she points out that Gunther is actually her cousin, but Gunther never breaks character, even when away from the LARP events. Weird. Suddenly they're attacked by bandits, and Gwen shows them what she's made of. On the other side of the event, some fairies are making their way through the woods while two of them deal with personal drama before splitting up. The girl ends up going her own way, and she runs into Demon Beth too. The two of them end up getting really close and personal until Demon Beth does her thing. By the bathroom, Ronnie, Lando, and Hung encounter Demon Beth, and Hung can see her clearly thanks to the shrooms. Hung attacks her, but Demon Beth is more powerful. Ronnie runs away, Lando hides in the bathroom, and Hung stabs her with a real dagger. Hung doesn't make it though, and I'm legitimately upset that I won't get any more of his shroom antics. Uh, Lando doesn't make it either. You could kind of see that one coming now. Soon, Joe and Gwen arrive at the bathroom because they heard Lando scream, and they find Hung's body. They don't understand what happened, but a sound from the bathroom makes them investigate. Joe ends up getting knocked out, and he has a memory of Beth. The memory is distorted though, and he sees Demon Beth. He wakes up to Gunther trying to choke him, and Gunther tries to guess that all of this is because Eric summoned evil from his book. Eric convinces Gunther to run back to the parking lot to arm themselves, and he wants Gwen and Joe to call for help. Once back at the parking lot, Gunther arms himself, and one of the assistants calls the sheriff's office for Gwen. When Gwen tells the deputy that something went wrong at the LARP, the deputy gets excited. It's the damn rednecks, go figure. Back at the LARP, Gunther rushes to the battlefield to confront the demon, and the others chase after them. They run into Demon Beth eating the assistant, and they can't believe that the demon is actually Beth. She comes for Joe, but Gwen runs her through with the sword. While listening to Demon Beth as she gets the sword out of her, Joe tells Eric to sing another passage from the book. Demon Beth runs for the woods, and Ronnie pops up out of nowhere. When Ronnie flips through the book, he asks Eric if he read a specific page, and after Eric admits to it, he tells them that Eric actually summoned a succubus from hell. The new passage that Eric read didn't destroy Demon Beth, it actually transformed her into a Bominog. This would be like a LARPer's every wish come true, except for the fact that all these people have to defend themselves are foam sticks. After hearing the battle horn for the LARPers, Joe decides that it's time to actually stop this thing. Eric starts to think that he's in over his head, but Joe tells him that this is his one chance to be what he's always pretending to be. Once everyone's on the same page, Eric gives a magnificent little speech, and they head back to the van to arm themselves with real weapons. Now that they look like the genuine deal, they rush back to the battlefield to try and stop the slaughter from happening. Little do they know that the rednecks are on their way as well. At the battlefield, the leaders give their glorious speeches to their armies. This is uh, what I envision as a Dollar Tree version of the speech from Braveheart. If you want a value version of Mel Gibson, this is as far as you need to dig to find it. It would definitely be enough for a LARPing event, but thank goodness they are not actually going into battle. Even the leader in the wheelchairs tries to stand to rally the troops. He'll be out of the fight before the fight even starts. Finally, the battle begins and the horn is blown. Abominog draws closer as the LARPers battle each other, but there's another surprise. A LARPing dragon arrives on the battlefield, and all the LARPers turn their attention to the make-believe creature. As the group makes their way to the battlefield, they hear the dragon roaring, but they hear Abominog drawing closer as well. As the dragon runs around, the rednecks arrive on the scene, and they lay down their paintball law. The LARPers have had enough though. They stand together to fight back, but suddenly Abominog arrives and starts tearing people apart. It doesn't take long for everyone to realize that it's not part of the actual event. Abominog beats its way through the LARPers, and it takes the rednecks out too. For a cheaper movie, Abominog actually looks pretty terrifying. Reminds me of Predator in the first Predator movie. Could be its reject cousin. The redneck with the book tattooed on his face tries to fight back, but he ends up losing his head before he can get a shot off. Ronnie rushes onto the battlefield to warn people, but he soon realizes that they're just a little too late for that. They hide behind the redneck's truck as Ronnie tries to start it, and Joe takes this opportunity to ask Gwen out on a date if they make it out alive. She agrees. Suddenly, Gunther pops up and defends a helpless man, and he notices the text tattooed on the severed head. The others attack Abominog, but it laughs at them. Literally laughs. Eric tries to find the passage to send the demon back to hell, and Ronnie pins it with the truck. On top of that, Gunther pins the demon's hand with a sword. Eric starts singing the passage, but he loses the book when Abominog sets it on fire. Ronnie rushes out of the truck to put the fire out, and Gwen hops into the truck to keep the demon pinned. When Ronnie finds that the book is destroyed, he finds the gem that holds the power, and he says that he needs a banishment spell. Gunther rushes behind the tent, and he grabs the redneck's head that had the spell tattooed on it. As he sings it, Abominog gets free and kills Ronnie. 
What do we do when official demon spellbooks get burnt to a crisp? We sing doom metal at it. This is so cheesy, but I'm all about it. I'll be listening to the soundtrack for years to come. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Hung gets to have his own vengeance. That's right, they brought back Shroom Tripping Hung. As Joe hits the final power chord, Hung delivers the final blow and Abominaga's finished. The remaining members of the group gather, and Gwen tells Joe that he needs to work on his taste in women. He points out that his taste in music is fantastic, though. Six months later, Joe and Gwen are jamming out in his room, and they start their own doom metal band. They never LARPed again. He's also officially over Beth now. Gunther's always in-game after facing a demon. Ronnie's been awarded Game Master Extraordinaire, Eric finally learned how to speak Enochian, and Sir Hung has become a legend. Then, the credits roll. Yeah, I need more of these. This is the kind of comedy I love, and the soundtrack isn't bad either. This movie's a win-win all around. Also, if you like this one, another movie to check out is Deathgasm. I'd do it here, but the amount of blood in that movie would probably get the channel shut down. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.